Hootie Who Glamour Girls, it's Sam here with a quick reminder that we are going on tour. That's right. A podcast can go on tour to Now I've Seen Everything. We are going mid-August to mid-September, and we are going to Boston, Philadelphia, D.C., Minneapolis, Chicago, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, California. So if you live in any of those cities, get tickets now. You can go to our Instagram bio. The link is linktree.com slash radiolab. We are so excited to see you all out there on the damn road. We're road dogs now. Um, okay, enjoy the episode. XOXO, Sam. Attention, Glamour Girls. If you are listening to this, our global tour starts tomorrow. That's right. The tour that some people are calling the People's Era Tour starts tomorrow, Wednesday, August 16th in Boston, Massachusetts. And the East Coast leg is going to be Boston, Philly, and D.C. It's all this week. So get those tickets now. Linktree.com slash Stradiolab. The link is in all our bios on all social media platforms. And after that, it's going to be Minneapolis. It's going to be Chicago. It's going to be Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles. But right now, we're talking East Coast, baby. We'll see you in Boston. We'll see you in Philly. And we'll see you in D.C. And also, by the way, before you press play on this episode, or rather before the episode starts that you've already pressed play on, I want to say one thing, which is I share a piece of explosive gossip on this episode that now may potentially seem... I don't know, I wouldn't say dated, but may potentially seem less explosive than it once was because there's some writing about it online. But I just want to make it clear that the episode was recorded almost a month ago. So I actually was incredibly prophetic. I'm not going to ruin what it was, but you'll, you know, you'll gasp when you hear it. So, so there you go. I'm here. I'm over caffeinated and I am telling you to buy tickets to our tour and be impressed with my explosive piece of gossip. Love ya. Bye bye. Podcast starts now. What's up, everyone? And welcome to Stradio Lab, the most, let's say it, um, groundbreaking podcast there ever has been. Thank you. George, we saw each other today. Correct. And I would say we were both at the lowest morale we've ever been at. <laughs> <laughs> How has your day progressed? Well, you know, we just recorded, we just recorded an episode uh, a week ago where... I was in a deliriously positive mood on a Tuesday afternoon. And every you know, this was this was sort of once in a lifetime. You know, as a as a Greek American, I will say that there is a sort of narrative of Icarus happening in my life, mm. in that I flew too close to the sun, the sun being being in a good mood on a Tuesday <laughs> afternoon. Because lo and behold, we are now once again coming at you live from a Tuesday afternoon. I'm not feeling great. No. I'm feeling tired. Mm. I'm feeling like Sort of, you know, sweaty. Oh. I'll say it. Okay. I am feeling like fidgety. Oh. Well, I actually had a big moment. I had sort of a turnaround since we last saw each other. Okay. Because I think what happened with me, I think it was actually more chemical than anything else. Uh I think... You took Molly. (laughs) I took Molly recently. No, I... Well, I when we met up, I got a large iced coffee, and actually, I think it was ruining me. It was making me nauseous, Mm -hmm. and I wasn't addressing that reality. I was sort of thinking, you know, I'm just nauseous because I'm weak. Sure, I'm just nauseous because city life is too hard. Yeah, and actually, what was going on was chemical, and it was a coffee that I was drinking too quickly. Now I laid down, and I I Mm -hmm. have not. I'm I've been out of bed for a full half hour, and I feel brand new i feel reborn and i feel oh not i wouldn't say i'm in a great mood but i would say i Mm -hmm. see a path forward so you realize your problem was chemical and it was solved by lying in bed for a little bit (laughs) essentially yes wow would you recommend that as a something people with mental illness can do and it would help yeah i think if you are feeling mentally ill may i recommend getting into your bed sticking around there especially maybe if you don't have anything to do um you can sort of kill two three hours in there yeah just stare at your phone i think any of these techniques i have personally found are really really useful 
There's a mental health crisis in this country, and I think what would really help is people chilling out for a second. People need to look at their phones. I don't it's know how crazy. much louder to and say it. Horizontally, preferably. <laughs> I think looking at your phone while lying down and sort of risking that it could fall on your face adds a little sense of drama that could really like put you in a very well balanced mood. And you know what I do? I turn off the you know the ability for the phone screen to flip around. You know, mm. so that. No matter which angle I'm laying at, I'm seeing the phone how I want to see the phone. Right. (laughs) The more you can sort of not know exactly where you are in time and space, the better you will feel. And that's my message. That's my message. And not to be completely... I I think that I'm getting more and more superstitious. I actually Uh think there was something... It was like rainy before and i was like like at this point when it's rainy i'm like no this is affecting my body i'm like i'm like there's something in the air pressure that is like making me feel down in a way that is you are being so science forward today i'm being very science forward you you know you are you are talking about chemicals you are talking about your brain chemistry Mm. you are talking about potentially the ways the moon and the weather affect your internal organs yeah essentially and um yeah and i'm also here to say vaccines there's no proof that they were there's no proof <laughs> there's no proof but good luck saying that on iheart media yeah they'll si- they'll censor that for sure needless to say yeah i see you're becoming blurry all of a sudden as soon as you said the word oh, vaccine I'm actually cutting out. I, uh, uh, oh uh, uh, oh oh you're being replaced by the dnc <laughs> <laughs> wow we're being so edgy today I know it's insane. Yeah, we're being fucking crazy. You know what? I also I have a I have something I wanted to say, which is I was like, you know, we have a very illustrious guest today. Someone I want to, you know, I I, I want this person to log off and be like, those were some really intelligent guys. <laughs> that's sort of the that's the goal that I want at the end of this in about an hour. Like that's where I want to be. You know what I mean? Wow. And of course, my fear was, as you know, in the you know in the evening, because here in New York time we are, it is inching towards dinner time. And in the evening, I'm not potentially at my mo- at my brightest. One could say I can't form a sentence. No, no, no. And then I reached into and I said, I'm going to reach into my drawer, of the Explorer backpack, and see what can I sort of whip out to really turn that vibe around. (laughs) And I remembered that I heard the most explosive gossip recently that I had decided not to share with anyone. Okay, so basically, so I'm not going to reveal what it is until we bring in our guests. But needless to say, I'm at an all-time confidence level because I have the most explosive gossip that is actually has a global impact. And I'm going to announce it here today. Okay, so you have a huge announcement of of global gossip. I have a huge announcement. It's global gossip. It's, It's actually related to the topic at hand. And I think as soon as I say this announcement, it's going to do two things. First of all, everyone's going to take me more seriously because they're going to say, okay, you are plugged into global information ecosystems. (laughs) Okay. And then second of all, they're going to say, oh, what an interesting conversationalist. Let's ping pong back and forth. Wow. I mean, I'm so excited. I think not enough podcasters are revealing groundbreaking gossip live I agree. on the air. It's always like referencing sort of like, oh, yeah, we hung out with this person. I probably shouldn't talk about it here. But I mm. think what you're doing is really revolutionary. And it's about transparency, quite frankly. Thank you. And without further ado, I think it might be time to bring in our guest. I say go off. All right. Well, I have to say I am so excited to have him on. Please welcome John Lovett because I want to say something. I want to say something while you're on the mic. Okay, well I'm here. I'm Do you on know what the I mic. Had, I had this. I had a realization. Okay, so I have talked to you twice in my life. Once was when I worked at Quibi, and the other one was when I did your podcast when I was first, <laughs> like the first week that Gawker relaunched. Mm-hmm. Two week. So so you have talked to me <laughs> at the two times in my life that I have worked at a company that then completely. Um, uh, completely fell to the ground like mere months later. How do you feel about that? Well, I, here's what I'd say. Um, <laughs> I always know that I can trust someone who refers to themselves as being, mm. and I quote, plugged into the global information system. That's how <laughs> you know you. you're dealing with sort of someone who is on the level. Only people with accurate, reliable facts refers yeah. <laughs> to that system. And I just want to say, as someone who has worked at Quibi and the short-lived Gawker 2.0, I could not be more plugged into the global information ecosystem. Um, I also would like to make a second point, which is Please. Um, uh, you've both said that you are at something akin to your lowest ebb. And as okay. far as I, I you can tell, and as far as I can tell, uh-huh. uh, George is because you are hot in the month of July 
And mm. Sam, it is because as far as I can tell, you had a cup of coffee and a nap in the afternoon, which to me <laughs> Thank you for bringing sounds this up. Mm-hmm. lovely. It sounds like you had <laughs> yeah. a lovely afternoon. Huh. Huh. Well, you know, well, the grass here's is the thing, always John. Greener. It was raining. <laughs> oh, yes. Also the weather. <laughs> See, you know, it's really complicated. Um you know, where you know how sometimes there's like certain dogs that if they don't, you know, herd sheep that day, they um <laughs> get depressed. Yeah. That's I think that's sort sure. of what we are. Right. Um we're those herding like hustle dogs. culture dogs. Those hustle culture dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we are sort of the poster boys of hustle culture. We'll go out in the rain. Yeah. Wow. And so when we can't hustle and we can't grind and we can't rise and rise and grind, Mm -hmm. it it really um, affects us in a huge way. Is that why you go to bed twice a day? Because that's two times as many. That's twice as much rising, which could maybe hopefully lead to to twice as much grinding. To be clear, (laughs) if you are in any way um, on an unregulated amount of uppers and coffee counts Mm -hmm. or if it's raining, you have to call in. You can't do hustle and grind. You can't do hustle or rise and grind. Every day, we're not we're not machines. We're not the transformers. <laughs> and I and I've always said that. <laughs> I'm not a machine. Yes. I'm not a transformer. I'm not a transformer. So if it's raining, I can't rise and grind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and no one wants to rise and grind more than me. And I would love to if it were not a little bit rainy today. I think that's sort of what we're trying to say. Right. I also think um, potentially John is pointing to a central. I would say that the spirit of this podcast is very like we mention things that are completely normal and then pathologize them to the extent to, to, to a frankly alarming extent. <laughs> um, I think John, I would say we are, we think talking about something that is inherently interesting is too easy. Well, I just think like, I think it's like de stigmatize catastrophizing. Right. Thank oh you. my God. So true. That is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess I want to say, based on what you've heard of us so far, um, do you feel that we are potentially um, lazy and or weak willed? Mm. Oh, come on. No, no. <laughs> what what kind of thing is that to say about yourself? You can, uh, I just, uh, you know, when you, you're getting down on yourself the, again, did Sam, the, did the young men in those boats heading across the English Channel on D-Day say that they say that about themselves? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Of course not. Of course they didn't. They were terrified. Yeah. I mean, what we are doing right now by podcasting is as dangerous and as selfless <laughs> and as I, just history making as D Day. Mm-hmm. That's it. When Napoleon, yeah, but when guess Napoleon, what? We're not going to fuck it when up. Napoleon <laughs> aimed his cannons at the pyramids. Something that I know happened mm-hmm. because of a trailer I saw. I saw that trailer as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved. Did I found he that say, so informative. Did he say I'm lazy? No, no. He said I'm going to be king. But also, on the other hand, you know, being lazy also should be destigmatized. Because guess what? If you look hard enough, a lot of the things these people are doing not very good. That's yeah. true. That's really true. Yeah. Um, well, George, should we just get into whatever your gossip is? Yes. Okay. All right. You know what? For anyone listening, I have gossip. (laughs) Okay. Here's my explosive gossip. At first, when I heard it, I said, what are you talking about? Like, you're just a, you're just a girl, not to be sexist. How do you know this? But then I actually asked for sourcing and it turns out this, and I, and and you're, I'm going to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I promise this is true. Okay. You ready? ready? I'm ready. Okay, Megan and Harry are breaking up. Oh, come on. Wait, come what? On. what? That's what you're bringing? That you're going to throw something <laughs> like that out there? What are you talking about? I mean, look. Okay, what is your what is your response, John? There's really Here's here's the thing. There's only two things. There's only two I I can't have a response. You've introducing some yeah. you've introduced something so explosive. <laughs> so uh so unknown to us. So mm. so new. So new. And so I guess my reaction to it is there's really two there's two paths that lie before us. Um, there's one in which you've shared some idle nonsense that will not right. come to pass, in sure. which case we'll forget this ever happened. And that's exactly. something we'll do as a courtesy to each other to pretend we never went through this. Mm-hmm. But there's another <laughs> path, which is the exciting one, which is why I think it's so smart of you to raise it. Thank you. Because will either forget you were wrong or remember forever that you were right. 
Right. No one is ever going to come back to me a year from now and be like, you stupid bitch. Remember when you said Harry and Meghan broke up? What were you thinking, dumbass? No one's ever going to do that because no one's ever going to remember. But if I'm telling you they are going to break up in the next calendar year. Oh, a a calendar year. No, no, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. (laughs) Here's the thing. (laughs) Sorry. I'm sorry. Well, here's the thing. Should I get my manager? Let me tell you something. (laughs) Let me tell you something. Because because actually I have I have something a very important to add to this, which is that they are waiting for a deal to go through before they can announce. But because of the strikes, who knows when that will happen? What? 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 A How do you have this? They are in entertainment. They are in entertainment. How do you have this information? I that I cannot disclose. I'm sorry. They're they're waiting for a deal to go through. They're well. Of course, they are famous Hollywood producers. Of course, and former podcast producers before they absolutely flopped. Now they're just Hollywood producers, so they are waiting on some sort of deal to close. And when that deal closes, they're going to announce their breakup af- after a few months, presumably. Okay. Okay. But in terms of their marital bed, it is barren. <laughs> okay. Well, you're out there now. You're out there. Yeah. That's it. You know what's great about this also is like... the. The royals are the one topic that you can truly spread misinformation about, and not even not even a misinformation expert will call you out. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, that's what we do with royals." That's true, I guess. Um, a cool thing to I, be a part of, for sure. Absolutely, it's it's wonderful to be part of the community. I consider myself part of the Daily Mail sort of uh, mm-hmm. British tabloid ecosystem, and I am proud yeah. to be part. The of moon that. to their sun, if you will. Yes, yeah. and I'm so happy to be contributing to misinformation globally. I mean, not to bring it back again, but um, you know, we're you are a sheepdog, except instead of sheep, it's um, breaking news. And you well, know, now that you're not at a, a media outlet, a digital media outlet, you mm-hmm. have to sort of do it solo, independently, or else you'll go crazy. And that's I'm so glad you're getting back on the horse and breaking the story. Well, thank you. You know, it has been almost six months since uh, Gawker shut down, <laughs> and every day I have been breaking news, but only um, in a sort of boutique way, just to people I know. I haven't actually been given a new platform other than this podcast, which I refuse to use for my personal projects, which are spreading misinformation about the Royals. <laughs> but I don't know. I was just like, you know, we're having, we're, you know, we're having a big guest on. Like, it's time to go big or go home. And so I. I'm, I'm telling you, I really, I was skeptical and it was explained to me. And now I genuinely think it's true. <laughs> and just for, and I, and I'm happy that Please. you, like, I'm glad that you Thank have you. that, but like, just, just to like, just to walk a moment in mm. Sam's shoes, my shoes. Yes. Um, when do we know? When can we say you were right? Like, when can we, when, when can, when I know. can I, when can like, look, we don't, we, when can I say, uh, reach out and say, hey, hey, it didn't, hey, you know, when is that? It's tough. I know. I know. Okay. You're, 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 you want me to give you a deadline and which I think is fair, like to, to give a deadline and say, if it hasn't been announced by then, then I am, then you can shoot me a text that says you Like lied. if you want to lead a cult, you got to tell of me course. when the world's going to end. Yeah. You're right. Okay. What would be a time period that we're is negotiating. short That's, enough? Now we're negotiating. It can't possibly be a negotiation. It's a fact so, in your I'm head. Pro- <laughs> Excuse me. I'm a, I'm a professional. You know, I, I know I know what I'm doing, and I know how the media works. Yeah, John. You're right. Okay, I'm sorry. You know, it's a two way street. Of course, it's me, my community, my audience. And what people love about me as a journalist is that I create that sort of personal relationship with my audience. That I ask them, "What do I have to tell you for you to respect me?" Right. And basically for that, you're saying you're trying to get to basically say, hey, I need a date that I can say that makes it that will prove yes. that this kind of uh, gaping maw of human mm. misery yeah. at which we are all staring uh, will have been revealed. I my starting offer is one year. I like but I'm willing to negotiate. I like one year. I think that's really tasteful. It's clean, which I think is really nice. Uh, John, you reject it. Of course I reject it. Of course I reject it. There are couples today that are mm-hmm. 100% happy that will be divorced right. one year from today. Wow. Sure. You could be wrong. Okay. You can seem right and have been wrong in a year. And I I simply I simply don't I don't want to be a part of that. Like I don't want to be. Right. I don't want to be in some situation where you're gloating in a disgusting yeah. way 
and actually and you know, we would... can, and I can't prove it to you and you can't prove mm-hmm. it to me but I don't believe that what you're describing really happened I think you got lucky and that's not why yeah. I'm here I I, I, I want to propose okay. an addendum to this this contract I think the time limit should start when the strike ends when the strikes end yeah exactly how do you feel about that oh when we're living on the moon <laughs> So you think they're going to get divorced on the moon? <laughs> yeah. 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 What does yeah. that even mean? I think <laughs> RFK Jr. will be president. We will be living yeah. on the moon and they're going to get divorced. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. You know what? Then then maybe we say six months. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Wait. Okay. If they're getting yeah. divorced... But the, yeah. they're waiting for the project to go through. How much longer right. is this deadline going to go? Because if it's like, we can't get divorced until the deal goes through, won't they also have to make the project that the deal is for? If you want to get really conspiratorial, you know what I'm thinking. It's a divorced the project. St- they will end the strike in order to get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, people think they're negotiating the WGA, SAG, whoever, Zaslav. No, 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 no. Harry and Meghan are going to decide when the strike ends because it's when they are ready to announce her divorce. Wow. Is, After their deal goes. Is Yeah. Is Meghan still in SAG? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you I think mm-hmm. unlike the WGA, you, you can just stay in. You're it. always in. You can just stay yeah, you just in. you just pay your true? dues and you, you just stay pay in. Your dues. It. Yeah, if you pay and I'm sure she's paying her oh, dues. Oh, she can afford it. Well, actually, we'll see when this deal goes <laughs> through, but for now. <laughs> I'm still a little bit confused as to how I'm supposed to feel about this news. Uh, it's um sure. Uh, I'm gonna just just put in my listen. Uh, you know, I believe you. I trust you. I, of course, but I am just gonna. I see go you're checking ahead. your phone to see if there are any news alerts I'm already. Putting, <laughs> I'm going to um, a month called December. Or wait, what's six yes. months from now? Is that November, July, August, January. September, October, November, December, January? I'm going to the month of January, and I'm gonna oh, put New on Year. January yeah. 18th. I'm just gonna add a little calendar alert. And we're just Please, gonna. I actually would love and that'll that. just remind all of us mm-hmm. that this happened because if we're <laughs> if we don't need the reminder, God help us. Yeah, of course. And you know, I think that's actually perfect because January. You know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing a, a Megan is going to have some sort of post that the, the the spirit of which will be New Year, New Me. I think she is going to write the words New Year, New Me after announcing her divorce. And it's going to be January. I would say week week two of January because she wants people to be like back in the office and sort of paying attention to news. Yeah, she's not a yeah. fan of hybrid. She Exactly. And she wants she's going to say New Year, New Me, and she's going to announce her own project as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they're not going to do well. Wow. Is the I mean, it's just predictions on predictions. Yeah. Well, I think she's going to get cast in something. I think her personal projects might flop, but I do think she'll get cast in something, sort of a stunt casting, and it'll be almost like it'll be like a bad, um, like one of those like brain dead sort of Netflix original series that you're like, who watches oh, this? But then actually, it's the most popular show in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, whereas I think she's going to do voiceover work in a children's animated series. <laughs> John, any predictions? Um. Look, I think. Um, Oppenheimer comes out this weekend. People are going to be True. like, is she in that? Uh, she, um, in spirit, but not physically. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the, she did the sound effects for the bomb. She, was yeah. like, she, she got into the studio and said, <laughs> 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 so that's her in there. Um, but, uh, so that's going to create a lot of appetite for other kinds of biopics like that. And, you know, I think that like, she'll be all over, She's going to play Marie Curie. She's going to play Marie Curie. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the Niels timeline. Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr. Well, they're going to do a gender flip Niels Bohr. Yeah, finally. It's like salt. Um, Remember salt? Time. Like salt. Yes, exactly. of course. Never so forget. the timeline is Megan. First of all, New Year. Happy New Year. Megan and Harry announce divorce. Megan announces her new projects, which are a children's series and the Niels Bohr gender flipped drama. Mm-hmm. It's going to be directed by a woman, but it's not going to be one of the good ones. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I think, you know what I think? What do you, you know, think? Her podcast called. Will, will you, hey, you know what would be great? Was, Can you tell us what you think? That would be helpful. I would love to, and thank <laughs> you for asking. Uh, 
her podcast that, of course, has failed was called Archetypes, and each episode was about a different archetype, okay? And so the archetypes were like, you know, um, career woman or bitch or whatever. I don't, I, you know, I don't have them in front of me. I think she's going to come back with a, one, with a one-time episode, and the archetype is going to be divorcee, and she's going to debunk myths about the archetype of the divorcee, and she's going to say, you know, because at every stage in her life, basically, she has been... Um, attacked for for being a different archetype. That's the narrative of Meghan Markle. Now she's going to be a divorcee. And let me tell you something. Talk about victimhood. <laughs> wow. You are already mad about a hypothetical project, about a hypothetical <laughs> divorce I, that for I, all I, I we know her. is completely <laughs> manufactured. I support her. And you'll notice I'm not saying anything about Harry because I don't get, care about him. I want Meghan mm-hmm. to do well when she plays Niels Bohr. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Great. Wow. Anyway, I think I've done enough talking, but you guys feel free to contribute to um, to this news story that I'm breaking. Uh, <laughs> Is that how the news works? Is it like improv? Yeah. It's just we're yes ending yeah. the story. That's how we did it at Gawker, and we, and, and, and we all know and, and now it I'm a multi-millionaire. And that went perfectly. <laughs> Famously, that went perfectly. Feel free Both to times, contribute actually. to add your own spin on this big story. <laughs> Um, wow. Well, thank you for that, George. I, of course, um, <laughs> I feel, um, I think our listeners are going to be thrilled with this big scoop and, um, everyone's going to save the date. Maybe we should have a live show, um, on January, January 18th, 18th, um, where we can celebrate the fact that you were right and that they did in fact get a divorce. What if we all months. wear the same thing? Um, and then we that. kind of like all look up at the sky at the same time and then all eat mm-hmm. one thing, one special <laughs> thing together. Maybe a crumpet to celebrate mm. British. Yeah, I like <laughs> to that. celebrate British. <sighs> I think, yeah, a live show where we do a reveal of are they or are they not divorced, where we basically get on stage, check our phone and see if the New York Times <laughs> has anything to say. <laughs> Could be big. <laughs> well, I really do hope you're right. I think that would be the shakeup both countries need right now. I'm just, if I'm right, though, and it's like gay podcaster predicted this, you know what? That would be insanely good for my you know what? Amazing. You know what? I realized we made a huge mistake. And let me tell you why. Yeah. Let me tell you the mistake we made. Why? Uh oh. If you are right, we have had this mm-hmm. conversation in such a way that we don't seem cool at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this doesn't like. I it's not like you go it. back and listen to this and be like, "Wow, they really had it," you know? No, you're gonna go back and listen and say, "Oh, there was a brave truth teller that really went out on a limb to two LGBTQ plus friends." And what did they do? They said, "Your truth is not valid." They were friendly. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Famously, we've met three times. <laughs> but. but <laughs> I mean, I don't think we were uh, dismissing your news. I think no. we were trying to engage with it as as best sure. we could. Um, we were just fair. doing our due diligence, and we've both fallen for so much misinformation over the past few years <laughs> that um, we've learned our lesson, quite frankly. Well, that's exactly. Thank you for, and you know, it's so well said. <laughs> and in that spirit, the spirit of intellectual excavation, should we go into our first segment? Yeah, I think we actually should go into our first segment. John, our first segment is called Straight Shooters, and in this segment, we will ask you a series of rapid-fire questions to gauge your familiarity with and complicity in straight culture. Okay. It's basically this thing or this other thing, and you have to pick one. The only rule is you can't ask a single follow-up question, or we will scream at you with a level of anger that is it's Oppenheimer levels. Wow. Um, Meghan Markle is going to be doing the sound effects of our screaming. These are post. no yeah. CGI. It is practical. No it's CGI. British ta- British tabloid levels of uh, just complete incoherent uh, yelling. Okay. Yeah. George, do you want to kick So you're going to want to ask a question because it's not going to make sense and you're going <laughs> to have to resist and just, the and sorry, And I, and I, I, I don't want to break uh, the rules. Uh, I really don't. And so mm, before we even begun, yeah. you're presenting me with two things and I'm picking one. And is it because it's the one I think is more straight, it, or is it because it's, it's the one I like more? My God! Very interesting. You think uh, we haven't already begun when, in fact, we said we are starting that the segment is a and question. then explain the rules. Okay. And Sorry. of course, the explaining of the rules is part of the segment. You, you know, if you're writing college essay, that would be the introduction. Right. Yep. Yeah. We're on the clock for and sure. And you better believe we're in the first body paragraph, and you are already at a disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sam. Do you want to start? Sure. Okay, John. Jessica Simpson or Lisa Simpson? 
Lisa Simpson. <laughs> John, being obsessed with true crime or being possessed by fine wine? Ugh. Ugh, possessed by true crime. Hmm. Okay. Canceling your plans or fondling your mans? Oh, can- canceling plans. You gotta cancel plans. <laughs> hmm. Buying a baguette in France or being in bad debt for a degree in dance? Hmm. I... <laughs> Uh, the d- 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 France. You get, we get bread. Carbs in France. I choose carbs in France. Mm. Okay, the ACTs, the SATs, or the RESPECTs. Ooh, SATs. Oh, mm. that's right. Being a high school bully or being a driven career woman named Julie. Julie. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Blue Man Group or Boy Scout Troop. Boy Scout Troop. Shopping at the Gap Factory clearance sale or looking for a satisfactory virile male? Wow. Oh, look, looking for a male. We're looking for a male. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you better be virile. Wow. They, they, they virile. cross the tag out. The, 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 the word <laughs> gap has a line through it because it's they don't want people to think it's true gap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> you know, I think that was incredible. And I think that was a really good performance. I am actually really impressed because... I think what I loved so much about that performance was that you, you know, you gave the audience what they wanted. You know, you you did break the rules just enough to 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 let them see us, you know, lose it, you know, go crazy. Yes. Sure. I think you came in with a with a need for speed. And I think the way you sometimes would rephrase the questions like saying carbs in France really painted a picture. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people don't have the courage to make it their own. And I think you did. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we rate every guest on a scale of zero to 1000 doves. And I would say that was a solid 890 doves. Wow. You know, that's actually do a little less so? than I was going to give, but I think... Oh, really? What were you going to give? I was going to say 950, a... but I, I, I mean, maybe it's... Well, no, no, that's perfect. And so then the average, it comes out to essentially an A-. minus. <laughs> so congratulations. Congratulations. That's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, it means the world. Yeah. Thank you. How did it, yeah. how did so it that... feel, you know, from your perspective? Yeah. Um, I felt, uh, I felt unmoored. Oh. Um, I felt as though... I didn't know if my job was to get to the next one as fast as possible right. or create moments. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I still don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also had it, no idea how many questions there would be. Sure. Unless there were many more, I hesitated to indulge in any <laughs> repartee. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, and I think everything you're saying is. And it sounds like I'm joking by design. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and by the way, that's I also did feel that, you know, while I felt yeah, yeah, unsafe yeah. and I did feel unsafe. Yeah. It didn't feel as though I was out of control, if that makes sense. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I think sure. I think that's that absolutely. And you didn't seem out of control. I think you seemed like you were rolling with the punches. Mm-hmm. 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 I didn't know when the ride was going to end. But I knew that yes. I wasn't going to fall out. You know what I'm saying? Yes. 100%. And I didn't know how many dips yeah, and turns reminds- there would be. I didn't know how scary it would be. I, I didn't know if it was going to be in the dark or the light, you know, or if there were loop de loops. But I trusted the harness. Yeah. yeah. I, and a teen checked and that's sort on of it what before it's all we about. left. A teen, a yes. teen checked it. Yeah. A teen, yes. Shook it up a and down. A teen that we hired specifically to sabotage the mm. ride, but he did not do a very good job. <laughs> Yes, I think I think what's beautiful about our one segment is that it is a sort of deconstructed podcast segment in the sense that it gives a guest an opportunity to just show us what they got. And it you know it dares to ask the question, what are we doing here? Yeah. yeah. And it dares to not provide an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think it's really helpful as we go into our discussion to sort of you know, get you, it's almost like a, it's like an improv warm up. you know, it, get, it breaks you down. It makes you see language differently so we can truly have our conversation mm-hmm. um, about whatever topic we will decide mm-hmm. to talk about. Right. We deconstruct language so that we can then reconstruct it yeah. via talking about straight topics, <laughs> which, and speaking of which, John, mm-hmm. your straight topic today, you know, we sort of came up with one collaboratively. We gave you a few options, but you chose the one that we wanted to do in the first place. Um, And your topic is the news. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess 
before we begin, I would like to know sort of if you, you know, you're on, you know, we're putting a spotlight on you. Your topic is the news. Tell us how, why you think the news is straight or when can it be straight and what is straight about it? Such an important question. Mm -hmm. Yes. One very important way in which the news is straight is that it is very, cares a lot about time, cares a lot about when things begin and when things end. 100%. Um, wow. It is also uh, something that has a uniform, a very specific uniform that, that people are in when they deliver, when you see them delivering the news, they better look and sound a certain way. And they're, even yes. their cadence on television and on the radio, if someone is telling you the news, they will have a very specific, very well-defined, very narrow band in which to convey that information. The news is also not about flights of fancy. It's not about exploring yourself. It's not about emotion. No. It's not about feeling. It's about, it's, about, it's about facts, you know? You know this as a journalist, and we've seen that even yes. today, that your obsession <laughs> I with think facts. I've embodied it. I've embodied it during the, the entirety of this and episode. It's the, and I would say the beginning of this episode is the straightest I've ever seen you. And I haven't seen you much. Yes. But my three, goodness. Three times. So famous, I think. Three, yeah. times three times, as we've discussed. Times. <laughs> yeah. And this was. And I keep getting straighter. You keep getting straighter. Um, you keep getting more masculine. That news was, mm. in a sense, mask for mask, I think. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. On the spectrum of straightness. Um, uh, and um, the news also is a lot about a guy telling you how it is. Yeah. I think the sense of authority exactly. is one mm -hmm. of the straighter parts of it. I completely it's agree. It's such a yeah. little uh, a little dance of trying to be both um, an everyman, but like an everyman that's just a little bit above all the other everyman. Well, it's trying to be dad. It's trying to be dad. Yes. I will say, though, there is one way in which the news can be quite gay, and it's when a, it's when a reporter says, I have a little secret. <laughs> and only I, I have a little secret. I have a little secret, and only I know. And I am gonna Ooh. tell you about it. Listen uh, to this. And I didn't just make this. Totally. And I didn't just. I. I. People told me this, and I checked with a couple <laughs> different people. So when I tell you this, oh, interesting. Listen, I know something, and it is fucking crazy. But listen oh. to this. That is the gayest part of the news. But that's investigative journalism, right? Yeah. Investigative journalism yes. is queer culture, and we've always said that. But the news is a straight space in which that queerness is allowed occasionally, depending on the year, yeah. depending on the business, allowed to thrive. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, I'm reminded of, um, <laughs> not to keep bringing up Gawker, the <laughs> first Gawker, original mm -hmm. Gawker. Of course. Their Gawker ta classic, the tagline yeah. was, you know, t yeah. today's gossip is tomorrow's news or like yesterday's gossip is today's news or one of the two. And to me, that is the sort of tension you're talking about where it's like when it's gossip, that's the reporting process is gossip and that's gay. Mm -hmm. And then when it becomes the news, that's when it's Yeah, I think the challenge there is that I think some of yesterday's gossip is tomorrow's news, but some of it's also tomorrow's gossip. Mm, that was, is true. Which was also part of that. It. Part of certainly part of what um, caused their downfall. <laughs> uh, I'll be the first to admit. <laughs> you know, I will say when I found out that anchor men get makeup done to them before going on air, that to me um, was akin to seeing two men hold hands for the first time. I said, you know what? Masculinity is a facade. This guy's wearing makeup to look more like mm -hmm. a, a man, like a serious man. It's gender affirming. Uh, it's gender affirming it's, care. It's exactly. gender affirming care. Being a newscaster, being a, a, an anchor man is one of the most gender affirming things a cisgender man can mm -hmm. do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, interesting. I mean, you raised so many good points. I mean, I'm already, uh, you know, the uniform, mili you know, feels very militaristic, feels very like, um, you know, a mailman. Well, maybe not a mailman, because that's kind of gay, but, you know, a militaristic, you <laughs> know, whatever. Back then, in your box. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then, you know, one person talking to many, that's fascism. I mean, the news is fascist. Uh, then we have... And that's fascism. Um, one person talking to a group of people... <laughs> Is fascism. that's it? That's what it is. That's what fascism is. That's I mean, how you know you're ask, looking at it. Ask any stand-up comedian. Ask anyone who has ever officiated a I wedding. Mean, teachers, it, teachers the, are fascist. Teachers, oh, don't get me started. Um, right wing, one might say. <laughs> yeah, and then 
as Sam is saying, you know, it gets sort of queer when you talk about the costuming element and uh, the cabaret element, of course. I mean, when you look at, uh, you know, election night on CNN or something, and there's various people touching various oversized iPads, Mm -hmm. um, talking in a sort of like theatrical voice you're like well this is essentially for all intents and purposes a production of and juliet yes i would say right there is i think one of the things i think what you're hitting on and i'm really glad you did is Thank you. in some sense what we're describing is a straight like the news is straight but often the delivery of the news is a form of drag mm. when you think about exactly. it exactly when you think exactly. about it uh also weather is gay uh its existence it's being described, pointing at clouds. There's nothing gayer than pointing mm-hmm. at a cloud. Can't do that in a straight nothing way. Nothing gayer than pointing at a cloud. There's also a way in which, like, the one area of the news where it's sort of okay to spread misinformation is the weather. Like, if they just guessed it wrong and then the next day it's not raining, no one's going to, like, storm the CNN offices. No, Nate, Nate Silver and the weather people, they just hide behind their probabilities. Uh, mm-hmm. And shame on all of them. <laughs> and shame, shame on, on all, all of them, them. to be honest. <laughs> Actually, I do think we need to talk about sort of gay icons in the news industry. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, Christina Applegate and Anchorman. (laughs) Well, okay, and I'm forgetting the guy's name. That monkey from the Today Show. (laughs) Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. Who's the guy who had like who who had like khakis and like did all the numbers? It wasn't Nate Silver, but like in the election. Steve Kornacki. Kornacki. Steve Kornacki. Kornacki. And the way that gay people clung to that and uh, it kind of bothered me where I was like, no, 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 no. This, this isn't um, the show you think it is. Like, you, you can't stand a man in in khakis and little glasses. And and I don't even think he wants to be stand. I, I maybe I'm wrong. Mm, I think he wants it a little bit. Hmm. If Steve Kornacki yeah. is your diva, right? I think you have some uh, internalized hatred. Well, well, oh, I would say more. I think okay, that's uh, that's. that's... <laughs> <laughs> guy, the guy the guy just walks people through the numbers and if you think he's doing a good job you fucking hate yourself no if you think he's really? a diva no 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 who thinks steve kornacki who is this i think per- a lot who is this who is this person that thinks steve kornacki is a diva you know who i think it is it's stray people it's like it's like how my i feel like okay i feel like gay people in the news are a lot of stray people's entryway into gay people at mm-hmm. large mm. I would say certainly for me, Nate Silver was a huge part of my dad's um, sort of coming terms with my own homosexuality. He was like, well, Nate Silver wrote a book and he's gay. Um, that is, first of all, that's it's um, <laughs> inspiring. It's inspiring. It's, uh, it's, it's shocking to hear. It's yeah. shocking to hear. Uh, Nate Silver taught me it was okay to be weird. I think is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would. I think my exact words were he taught my dad. No, no, I know. I was speaking in the voice gay. of your dad. I was speaking in the voice of. I was sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, course, I was in a course. scene and I was your father. Yes, yes, yes. If that yeah. wasn't clear, well, I'm you're doing sorry. theater like a newscaster. Yeah. You're, fa- you're doing. Your father you're doing was saying drag. he taught me to be weird, and being weird in this situation is it's weird Means that my son being is gay. gay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, but I do think Steve Kornack, is it Kornacki? Mm-hmm. I do think Steve Kornacki, Nate Silver, um, dare I say an Anderson Cooper figure, you know, these people are, I think, there's a there's an archetype of the gay man telling the news that is sort of extra, and by the way, not only gay men, Rachel Maddow, let's not go far. The, you know, there's an archetype of a gay person telling the news that almost to progressive Straight people makes well, them more trustworthy. I do, I do think to make like a to make like an earnest point about it. I don't even think it's gay versus straight. It is more. It is just everyone adhering to masculine, like a certain archetype of masculinity as being the only correct That's way true. to convey the information. And therefore, if someone is going to be taken seriously, they have to con- they have to convey it in a certain way. Rachel does that. Chris Hayes does that. All the Fox News people, even you know the, 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 those guys do mm-hmm. that. Kornacki does that. It's like. You know, it's like if you turned on Anderson Cooper and he was like, hey, everybody, oh, my God, you wouldn't believe what's happening in totally. Ukraine. Like there's an expectation yeah. that that you have to say the news the way a straight man would have said it in the 70s. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's interesting to, you know, I think. Sorry, go ahead, Sam. Well, I changed my point. I have a different point now to, to okay, go in a different direction. You know what it is? I hate the graphics packages around the news where it's like. 
everything <laughs> like we what we're saying is correct where it's like it is drag it is like we're all performing but we're performing masculinity but not even like in an lol way there's no height it's like but it is so heightened but we're not allowed to like laugh at it like we're not allowed to like it's not allowed to be like funny. It's like heightened and insane, but you have to be like, no, it's insane yeah. because it's so true. And it's like, at, at what point do we, it, we need to like, like library the news <laughs> well, it, and make it boring. No, I see what you're saying. No, yes. I, it's TV has been around a while and the spaces have evolved from what they like. It's like, originally it was like, this is somebody at a desk, right? Why are they at a desk? It's because it's meant to convey business, a newspaper, mm-hmm. the office. It's like almost like in the same way that like iPhone icons look like things from the real real world. The news was meant to look like things from the real world. But over time, as they've like struggled to get people to keep paying attention, they're like, um, make it all bright red and bright, bright blue and glass and metal and have the fucking graphics come at you out of the screen and also be in giant bold letters and have the camera swirl around and have have Wolf Blitzer at a giant slab of glass. And it's you look at this space that they're in and it's like, are you on a are you on some sort of alien craft? Like, what is what is this room <laughs> that you're in? Like, why are five people sitting at a a glass oval sitting on stools with a bright, yeah. with giant screens behind them. What is this space? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't, We w- there There was a need to redefine what authority looks like because the old kind of, the old kind of visuals were outdated, but we didn't land on a good alternative. <laughs> like what, what does authority look like in 2023 visually? If you, if you turn on the news or if you, if you read a, a newspaper or magazine, or frankly, if you look at a website, all websites look terrible now. So there's sort of there's a lack of uh, ideas when it comes to we need a graphic designer to fix the news. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, I mean, there's also like you see like a response to it. And then it's like you go into a store and they've made a sign and it's been printed, but it was made to be printed as if the paint was running out. So it looks smudgy because it's conveying oh, an authenticity. And then there's like for the, in the the millionth place with an Edison bulb and some exposed wood to like create authenticity, which of course you can't do because if you're trying to be authentic, you're not being authentic. So they all are, everyone yeah. is like, everyone is like grabbing at the same problem, which is that like no one really trusts any of these institutions. Nobody really feels like they know what's real. And it's like, like the news channels are trying to just keep, keep your attention like you're a kitten and so everything is balls of yarn and moving. And then the like in the real world, everything's trying everyone's trying to impersonate a farmhouse. It's all pretty fucked. Yeah, no, no, that's a very good I, I, yes, absolutely. I mean, and and again, the authenticity, it's like on TV, it was, you know, a guy standing behind a desk. And then in newspapers, there's something so just inherently trustworthy about like the, a, a newspaper that has the New York Times font and it just says like the whatever times, the whatever journal. What has replaced that? Sans serif? Like w- w- what is it? What is it on a website that has replaced that that looks trustworthy? There's nothing. No, it's just the same. The only things that are really trusted are the same brands that existed before. Those seem to have the like those kind of retain. They retain some trust. Yeah. Well, they're trusted by certain people, but in fact, infamously not trusted right. by a wide, a wide, yeah. So, okay. So here's the question then, like, <laughs> in this new media cacophony, oh. is that, is the, fa- is our current climate in its chaos and sort of uh, cabaret-esque um, cacophony, is that more straight or more gay than the old time, like C-SPAN, unsexy type of authority? Oh, I think it's gayer than it's ever been. That I think is mm. gayer. It just is. Yeah, gayer. Yes. Parentheses derogatory is sort of. Yeah, like gay, like you would say it in a high school gym. You know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I actually do think like it's a shame that both had to happen at the exact same time. Um, would have been nice to see them maybe not like maybe have get to try each one, but a lot more people got to make a lot more stuff basically everywhere at every level Mm -hmm. that's true i mean it's part of why the people are why people are striking it's true in journalism it's true because of the existence of social media just we got to hear from a huge number of people in ways that they were never heard before that is largely good at the same time the sheer number 
and ways of getting information and the kind of structure of advertising, plus just the fact that the internet is by its nature international, you know, a single place that's connected everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have like devalued physical places. We've devalued our towns. We've devalued interactions with people in our community. We've devalued the, the esteem and prestige a person could get in a community, right? Like we have devalued what it meant to be the leader of the PTA, to be the head of the Elks Club or whatever godforsaken male clubs existed in the past, to be the leader of your church, to be the mayor of your town, to run for local office, to lead a local project. Like we've kind of devalued those things, made them less prestigious, made serving in government at the local level less prestigious, and nothing good replaced it. So it's like we did these two things at the same time. The good part is that mm -hmm. so many more people get to get to speak and be heard, and that's had huge and positive ramifications. But we also obliterated the institutions that maybe they could have helped build. Um, and um, that bums me out, to make a serious point. And I'm sorry. Yeah. So so you're saying that no one wants to run for local office anymore, but the trade-off is they're going to be way more gay podcasters. Yeah, and honestly, like, <laughs> I'll, and uh, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And to be clear, the solution you're proposing is bring back gatekeepers. Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> yeah, not you in so many words, but I'm glad you said, you know, it's funny because I blathered on, but that's what I mean. Like yeah. bring back, yeah, hey, yeah. you know what this is? That's me locking a gate. You can't hear it because it's a podcast, but I just <laughs> turn the key and you know yeah. what? Throw yeah. the key away. It's locked. And you said, and you said, yeah. you know who has those keys? Men only. I think that's uh -huh. what you said. I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did. Yeah. Men. I also think, keys. yeah, <laughs> you're also pointing to something very gay, which is, uh, disrupting something big time with no long-term plan. Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It, right. Right. It's like, well, we already ordered costumes. <laughs> I'm in the Uber. We don't know where we're going. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm heading to the of middle course... of the place. I'm heading to the center of the region we had discussed. Right. Yeah. It's we're in lack of trust in institutions. Gay or straight, would you say? <sighs> I actually... Mm, it's interesting. It's interesting. Something about it feels straighter to me. Yeah, no, I agree with that. That was what my instinct interesting. was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if it's, you know, because <laughs> gay people love institutions because they're like, go off diva, and they're talking about the Supreme Court. Yeah, gay people are like, I would love to partner with that brand, like that institution, whereas straight uh -huh. people are like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, no, I, yeah. So, I, and you know what? I'm glad you said it. Yeah. Gay people are like, I'd love to partner with that brand and do a big activation this in the next six months. Look, here's the thing. Well, look, activations, activations is, that's what pride is about. Pride is simply one great activation. It is, yeah. a, it is the, it is an, you know, I would, you know, to use the German, it is an ur activation. I don't know. Mm, yes, very much so. No, okay. Keep going. No, I can't go off. Do it. I couldn't finish the sentence. Go, go off Umberto Echo. Wow. Thank what? you. Thank you for thank you for thank you for that comparison. So, okay. Wait. I have very sorry. Also, Sam. I I'm sorry. I'm 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 talk talk talking. Today. No, literally. I celebrate it and I say this okay. is perfect. I want to get into. I know we're running out of time, but I want to ask you sort of like. We've been talking about the news from like the news production standpoint. Like, what does news look like when it is being, uh, when is when it is on TV, when we are reading it in a, in a in a newspaper or a website or whatever. But I want to talk about the archetype of a news consumer, like the archetype of a news junkie, the archetype of like someone who just like is a news obsessive. Mm -hmm. Do you would you say that that is more gay or more? Oh, straight? that that is more gay. Yeah, I think I agree. And in fact. And if you were straight when you started, you're gay at the end. Mm. Yeah. The 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 profile of a person who's like actively following the news, that is such a weird person in the scale of totally. um, you know people in our society. Like that is so few people, and they are so clued in, and that is so gay. It is just so gay to keep up with all the twists and turns of the news. It is the it is the main reality show. And so, of course, all the gay people are watching it. Right. Yeah. It's a reality show. It's a way to create community and chosen family. Well, and you're creating narratives. You're, you're taking facts and you're creating narratives well, around it. Well, not to ring the Joan Didion alarm, but you're, we tell ourselves stories in order to Exactly. Live. 
And so that's what a lot of people are doing day in and day out watching MSNBC. Yes, 100%. Yeah, and like when we we had Jake Tapper on Pod Save America, and I said to him, thank you mm-hmm. for being here. I consider you my chosen family. And he looked at me weird, but wow. I know he got it. <laughs> I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes looking at someone weird can be a sign of um, true understanding. Yeah. Very gay to look someone <laughs> weird in a positive way. <laughs> You know, I'll never um, forget when I came out to my parents and they looked at me so weird and I said, this means they love me. This means they're seeing me and they're understanding. Me too. And then my dad said, have you heard of this Nate Silver? <laughs> the signal and the noise. What's up with that? <laughs> oh. um, well, John, I got to say, a lot of great points were raised today. What do you think, Sam? I'm like... I'm inspired to get out there and run for office. And I know I sound like I'm uh, like I'm being like I'm like I'm sort of making fun of your point, but I actually did really appreciate your monologue. Um, well, I guess I want to start by apologizing to everyone who I told to jump off a cliff for standing Steve Kornacki. That was too far. And I don't stand by that now that I've let I've sat with that for a while. Yeah. And I think that every cable news show host is living out loud and that's all we can ask for. Yeah. And I hope... So you both grow while you're making this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the goal. If (laughs) we don't grow, if we don't grow, we we cancel. (laughs) We don't release the episode. (laughs) Yeah. there's. (laughs) And I have to say the emotional growth meter is off the charge. I can... (laughs) Off the charts. I can see it here on the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. We we have to um, learn a moral lesson at the end of every single episode. You know, much like Icarus... Mm -hmm. (laughs) Did it? Do you think Icarus? We have to learn a more. That's an interesting part of it. They don't really talk it. They don't spend enough time about on what Icarus learned. He died. Well, that's oh, and, and, right, and which yeah. we all know. Uh, but yeah. right. but that means you don't really get to see what you kind of crave when you hear the story. Is what was Icarus's take on all this? Ex- that is a very good point. Yeah. And to build off of that, I want to say, you know, the people learning the lesson are in fact people hearing the story of Icarus, and so in that sense, he actually is a sort of. I don't want to say messiah. What's the word I'm looking for? A martyr, a martyr figure, because he died for the power of storytelling. Wow. Well, in a way, what you could say is that um, that's where cancel culture began. Mm, Thank you. And we all hear that story and say uh, Icarus wasn't killed by heat. He was killed by accountability. Yeah. Right. And and so it wasn't that his, you know, he flew flew too close to the sun. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And then he was held accountable for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, the sun um, has gone woke in this uh, metaphor, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and people are not blaming systemic <laughs> issues like heat. They are t- they are forcing this narrative of personal accountability on this person who is, by the way, an entrepreneur, um, someone who was a scientist. And not wrong. And not wrong, because guess what? We now do fly. And we're... Flying much closer to the sun than much he ever closer was. to the sun. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you would think the, the those brothers that created the planes maybe could have done it even earlier if Icarus hadn't been so stigmatized. Yeah, yeah, and that's right. I'm forgetting their name. <laughs> You're forgetting those brothers and the Wright brothers. <laughs> the Wright brothers. Thank those you. damn brothers. <laughs> you know those brothers. Those brothers. <laughs> those, those brothers. brothers. <laughs> those brothers. <laughs> wow. wow. Well, I think we've pretty much covered the news. Should we do our final segment? I think it's about time that we did. Um, um, okay, John, our final segment is called Shoutouts, and we pay homage to the great uh, straight tradition of the radio shoutout, but we shout out to anything that we are enjoying. So, you know, imagine it's 2001, you're at TRL, and you're shouting out to your squad back home, but about anything that you like. George, do yes, you I, have one? I can go, I can go. Love that. No. Okay. Um, all right. What's up? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> keep that. Keep that in. Keep that in, please. We're keeping it in. We're keeping it in. What's up? Uh, Sorry. You know, okay. All right. <laughs> this is genius. What's up, dreamers out there? Anyone who wants to fly too close to the sun and doesn't care about the consequences, I want to give a shout out to, okay, hear me out. I want to give a shout out to my new transition lenses. I have decided that I'm reclaiming the transition lens as a fashion statement. I think that too, for too long, it has had this connotation of, oh, uncool dad, like, you know, uncle, creepy, guy in a van. Guess what? This summer, it's chic gay guy, like me. 
that is wearing his transition lenses. I'm gonna go out and I'm not gonna have to carry around a whole other pair of glasses to put on when there's sun, because guess what? The glasses have technology on them and they're gonna become darker. It is giving a sort of a, tra- a, a, a narrative of growth and then, de- and, and you know, De- you know, growth, and then it, and then it contracts. It is a narrative. It is a cyclical narrative, and that's very LGBTQ plus. And I think that um, you know, much like those cups that sort of change color when you put a hot liquid in them, it gives a sort of excitement to your day that you wouldn't have otherwise. And you can hold various drinks and bags with your hands without having to take off your glasses and put other ones on. So it's really convenient in that sense. You have fewer things to remember when you leave the house. And also, sometimes when you're in the transitional phase and they're sort of like a light gray you look a little bit like um i don't know a sort of like european pop star or something and that can be really powerful as well like a 70s film producer exactly exactly 70s film producer or or porn producer mm-hmm. even so i just want to say you know get out there and take a fashion risk for once wow Woo. that was beautiful george i Thank have you. to say i've seen these transition lenses out in action and i was yeah. shocked that they were actually transition lenses because when you told me you were getting transition lenses i imagined you know the weird middle school kid like like that sort of uh look and i had no idea the strides they've made in transition technology and I'm telling you. and when you said european pop star i was literally gonna say um and i mean this in a good way bono it was giving Very a little bono. bit of bono I also um, think I you get that. you get to say something in the same cadence over and over and over again for the rest of your life, which is they're transition lessons. They're trans- they're transition lessons. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wait, you are so right. It, it's very much like when it's very much like the oh the dress this dress has pockets. Yeah. Mm. Of yeah. Of the, like but, 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 but. to have a little something. And then by the way, that's a conversation starter. I'm yeah. at a wedding. I'm hey, wearing my what's that on the ground? Lenses. It's a bunch of broken fucking ice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. Wow. Um, Should I, okay. I can, do you want me to do one? When do I do one? Do I do the end or have to do one? You, you, yeah, you, I go last. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you're the grand yeah, finale. Sorry, sorry, you're the grand finale. Grand finale. Sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Up. Sam, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. What's up, freaks, losers, and perverts around the globe? I would love to give a huge shout out to um, Super Goop Sunscreen. That's right. I have been out and about this summer, and I have been slobbing this stuff on, and it stays forever. I yesterday went to the beach, and I was there, yes, on a Monday. That's okay. You can do whatever you want. I'm on strike first and foremost, and that's how I spent it that day. And I applied sunscreen but one time when I was there for four hours and I did not get sunburned once. I'm loving this stuff and in fact I need to maybe use less of it because I'm not really getting tan in the way that I want to. And I don't want to get super tan, but you know what, I'm trying to get a little color. It is summer yeah, yeah. for crying out loud. So um, I a huge shout out to Super Goop and um, feeling like we still have so many more strides to make in sunscreen technology. Woo! Woo! Wow. I love a shout out that then gets nuanced at the end where you're like, well, it's not all good. I actually haven't gotten as tan as I want. <laughs> well, I think it's important to be honest. And I think that's, if yeah, anything, that's I- our discussion about the news today um, yeah and that's an endorsement that people will trust because they'll say you know he wasn't paid he didn't say only positive things he also said a negative thing yeah if you can't be a little bit negative about something how can you really like it yeah exactly yeah you have the you love it you love it like an adult yeah yeah it has flaws exactly you know it you don't love something that you, you love something because you know it not because you don't Yes. Yeah, you're not some stan. Yeah, I'm not standing it. You appreciate the music of... <laughs> you don't you know. say, sunscreen would never say that, sunscreen would never do that. You say, I don't know, exactly. know sunscreen well enough, but I love what sunscreen does. I just can't speak for sunscreen as a person. Yeah, well, exactly. I'm feeling so well, seen and heard. Incredible. Um, <laughs> you know, we're all going to start our own um, website that's anti-cancel culture after this. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Um, okay, John, whenever you are ready, you can go off. Um, hey, I just wanted to, uh, give a, give a little shout out to whoever cut the trees down in front of Universal, uh, that got rid of the shade Mm. that was shading where the striking writers and actors were picketing. And here's why. That is the, one of the great challenges we face is that this industry was kind of co-opted by corporations that have these vast financial interests. They are publicly traded. They need ever-growing profits. And this was the most Hollywood shit I've seen happen. The most old-school, Louis B. Mayer, 
Just an old guy with a cigar saying, fuck those kids, cut down the trees. That's the only time that that's happened. All the public statements are so fucking soft and they're so measured and they're so corporate, but the actual stakes are old school Hollywood fucking business. So it's like, it's like, yeah, you're you're mad at them. So you cut down the trees, which is probably not something you should do. <laughs> yeah, they understood the assignment. They understood the assignment. And it, it's like the first time a studio has acted like a studio in this whole fucking thing. You know, it's like malicious and mean and wrong and against the law. And they're going to get in trouble, but not as much trouble as they should. And all that right. is what Hollywood is all about. Woo! Woo! Wow, that's, that's right. Bring back villains. You're, that's so genius. Bring back villains who don't who don't say we want to change the world. Drama is back. Uh, uh, finally. How about a villain that says, I want to destroy yeah. the world? Maybe I'll, then I'll respect you. We've tried the villains that in their own minds are heroes. Let's try the other kind. Right. Yeah. yeah. I want a villain. I want a, a studio producer who wants to take over an orphanage um, so that they can use all the children as extras whenever they want. Oh, my God. Perfect. And by the way, the person who said that they want the strikes to go on until uh, no one can afford a house, that person should come out and say who they are and then write a book about it. They would be a bestseller. Yeah, the, the villain. The, the bad girl of the AMTP or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Have the courage I, to be the bad girl. It's like girl. The, the person who picked the, the uh, hello, hello, journalist. Here's my plan. <laughs> Hang <laughs> yeah. up the phone. Honey, I helped. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, wow. hey. You got to make a splash in this town. Tell you what. You know, I'll say this. If I was wrong about Harry and Meghan, I'm really sorry, you oh, guys. No, but you I just had to do, make a splash. You, no. dude, oh, now, now they're going to hear this, too. You got to. OK, no. This, okay. Remember, this only matters if you're right. If you're wrong, it's forgotten to time. If it's okay, right, you're, right, you're, you're, right, right, you're, right. A, you're a Nostradamus. You know what it was, John? It's like you were so inspiring and sort of like encouraging everyone to get out there and be civically engaged that it then made me regret the fact that I was potentially spreading misinformation, even as a joke. Yeah. Um, and so, Hey, Hey, this is your fault. But look, here's one thing. It's not, it may be misinformation, but what, but, but yeah. Sam and I both know is it wasn't disinformation. Correct. Cause it did not have the intent. You're to not trying to hurt anybody. You just right. may be wrong in an irresponsible and reckless way. All right. Yeah. But you're not mm. you're not trying to to make people you're not trying to hurt anybody. Right. And by the way, who would it hurt? And George, you know, never forget that you're human, okay? And you you're flawed, and that's what makes you so relatable to our hundreds of LGBTQ plus exactly. listeners. I'm like super goop sunscreen and that I'm not perfect. <laughs> But you're pretty good. I'm pretty good and I'm actually better than a lot of the alternatives in the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you know, so when the strike is over, just consider that studios. <laughs> when we're when we're putting on our gravity boots and our masks to go outside yeah, exactly. where we live on the moon. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And we're celebrating Megan's new TV show where she plays. Who was it? Niels, Niels Bohr. Bohr. <laughs> Uh, wow. about, about the discovery of the atom, I believe. Yes, oh. exactly. The film is called What a Bore. Oh, wow. What a riff. Mm. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, John, thank you so much for, um, for, for zooming in for this important conversation. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having this me. This was an absolute delight. Yeah, it was a treat. I feel enlightened. It was so much fun. <laughs> me too. I'm ready to get out there and read the news. Yeah. I got to say. I'm going to vote tomorrow. There's a first time for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, this was really fun. Thank you for doing it. All right. This was great. Okay, Goodbye. bye. We should have a sign-off, but we don't. Bye. 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 <laughs>